Hello, Crossroads Community Church. So great that you've joined us again today to share as we journey through the Gospel of Mark in the First Nations version, version of the New Testament. Mark, the name Mark means warlike hammer. And so here we would see as they look um, and use names and what they mean, you actually have the Gospel of Mark is called War Club tells the good story. So when we say war club, we're actually talking about Mark, a hammer, warlike, the one who hammers it in, maybe. Mark is the first gospel to be recorded. Um, and so we get the first uh, glimpse of what it was like to walk with Jesus. And so in as we journey through this book of Mark together, we want to understand what this journey is going to look like and we're on chapter three and so in chapter three we see the naming of the message bearers the ones who would bear the name and the message and carry out that message of creator sets free of jesus and so if you've watched our worship set we'll already have read this passage out um, and we will already have sung the songs, I will follow you. And I have decided to follow Jesus. And so what does it mean to decide to follow Jesus? What does it mean when we say, I will follow you? Well, let me tell you, this week has been an interesting week for the word follow. Um, as a leadership team here at Crossroads, we're going through a book written by uh, Commissioner uh, Bill Francis and building blocks of spiritual leadership and different styles and different types of being a leader. And this week we read together, we started our Monday on being a follower leader. And so one of the uh, quotes that Commissioner Francis wrote in his book was from Leith Anderson. And it said, it should surprise us that so much is said today about leaders and so little about followers, especially among Christians committed to the Bible. The Bible says comparatively little about leadership and a great deal about followership. Jesus did not invite Peter, Andrew, James, and John to become leaders. He said, follow me. And so as we think about what does that mean to follow Jesus in Mark chapter three, as he calls these 12 to be the message bearer, bearers, the ones who would carry out the message of the good road and the good story, Jesus encounters people who need healing, people who have stony hearts, who don't want this person to be healed because they're being healed on the Sabbath. We run into people with evil spirits who understand and the spirits recognize that Jesus is the great spirit. We see people who think that Jesus has lost his mind. We see people who are accusing him of being filled with evil spirits and doing what he is doing because evil is within him and carries that out. And then we see him in this chapter meet his family and find out who all his relatives were. So the journey that he was inviting the disciples to follow was a journey that they had no idea where it was going to lead. That's interesting because when you read through the scriptures, we'll have read through Genesis and we're in that if you've been following along with us. Abraham was called from his homeland to follow and go out and be faithful. Um, well, we've started the book of Joshua. He was called to lead the people across the Jordan into the promised land, but they didn't know what that was going to look like. We will read the prophets who were called to go speak a message, but they don't really know what the outcome is going to be. We really like setting plans, making plans, and having an idea where that journey is going to take us. We want to set a calendar for this year. Last year taught us that you can set a calendar, but it might not actually happen as you planned it out to be. We didn't plan 
11 months later still to be um, video uh, uplo uploading sermons and not gathering together in this building. But God has a plan when he calls us to follow him. A plan that has twists and turns, but the one con thing constant is that when we follow, when we follow Jesus, we follow the good road and we are part of the great story. And so I had, uh, I've been doing a hundred days to dream your heart out. And yesterday I came to where I was just journaling and it was called following Jesus. And these were the words I was reading as I was just praying and thinking about what, um, what I was dreaming this year and what God has for me personally and for us as a congregation. Here's these words. It says, when Jesus asked the disciples to follow him, he didn't give them much more to work with than that, to follow him. There were no plans after that, no outline or agenda about what the next steps were. And it says, first men came up with excuses. Jesus kept saying, no, oh, just follow me. Just follow me. That's what we're asked to do. And so where will that lead us? For the disciples, as we read through their journey, through the Gospel of Mark, through War Club Tells the Story, as we journey, I'm inviting us to allow our worlds to be shaken up, to not stay with what we know, the journey that we've already got planned out. This is hard for us. We want to know where it is we're going. In the church especially, we like our plans. We like our church calendars. We like things to move along. We like to come together every Sunday to share together the way we've done it. But I think we are being called again as the disciples were to a time when there will be new wine poured in and we need new wine skins to hold this good story. So as we journey, we're going to have to shake off some of the things that we've held on to. We are in a time where we recognize the church has done things wrong. We have a history in our country that we need to understand the truth and be reconciled with peoples we have hurt because We've told the story our way. A way that was comfortable for me and my people. We have people who are journeying, um, inviting us to see that there's new ways. Um, one book that we're looking through, I'm looking through, is looking at decolonization. How do we unpack how the church has participated in colonizing people and taking away their God-given right to be themselves and to hear the good story their way. We have um, friends who've written, uh, Richard Twist um, has gone on to his re eternal reward, um, but left us rescuing the gospels, the gospel from the cowboys. So often we don't want to look at this story again, but we like the Pharisees, like those people that Jesus spoke to, we sometimes say, that's not the right way to do it. And you can't be healed that way. Um, our good friend, Dr. Casey Church, wrote a book, Holy Smoke, looking at some of the traditional practices of his people um, and uh, many indigenous uh, nations, looking at practices that so often the church has said are wrong. God is challenging us, I believe, in this time as we can't meet together, as many of our traditions have been stripped away. What does it mean to follow the good road today? What is God asking of us today? It won't be like it was yesterday. We can't just set plans in place, but we can follow. And I just want to say that I want to commit to you to be a leader who will follow Jesus wherever that leads us. Will you come with us on that journey? Will you take time today to pray and ask 
creator to show you the good road, the good story, and then come share it with us. What creator speaks to you? What does that mean to you to follow Jesus? May it change your life. May we sing together. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. God bless you. May your dreams be fulfilled as you choose to follow Jesus.